on. Welcome to this episode of Dad Bod History. We are continuing our bromance brackets. 32 teams, four brackets, only one winner. And uh, let's get rolling. So we had a bracket. Brotiquity was our first bracket that we went through the first round in the play-in games. Uh, this is our second bracket, the Bro Roke bracket. So uh, dealing with high classical bromances, obviously. <laughs> And uh, just as a refresher, here are the rules. Um, before I introduce you guys, uh, here are the rules of the of the bracket. So we've got two playing games for this bracket, and um, the 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 way this will go is I have a set uh, in my little crown royal bag. I have a bunch of situations that these bros are going to be put into um, a- against each other, and then we get to discuss and vote on who would do better in that situation or what pairing would do better in that situation. We'll do up to three questions, but basically the first bromance to five points per round moves on to the next round. And uh, we're going to do a little bit different wrinkle than we did for the Brotiquity bracket. In the Brotiquity bracket, we have the same three scenarios for every matchup in that round. We're not going to do that. We'll pick different scenarios for each matchup. So there's a little bit of variation between matchups. Uh, but without further ado, how you guys doing? You ready, Eric? You ready, Cameron? I'm rocking. Let's do it. I can't okay. wait. Now, before we do it, little faux pas. Wow. We, we kind of made a mistake in, in the Brotiquity bracket. Not in our results. I stand by the judges' decisions. But not having Cameron for the Pippin and Jordan oh, matchup was, yeah. a, was a big, big mistake on our part. So I apologize, Cameron. I'm sorry about that, man. I, I would have pitched an absolute fit now that I know the uh, results. You know, mm-hmm. the, the judges' if, ruling if stand. you got to respect it. If Cameron's bromance with us was real, he would have been there. It's all I'm Ooh. saying. Whoa. So, Whoa. Harsh but true. Harsh Just but saying. true. <laughs> See Although, your loyalty lies, here, Cameron. But here's my, the thing. My here's wife just is gotta already make sure. a little jealous of you guys, so don't don't make it worse, Eric. <laughs> My We're wife, jealous of her. My wife Ooh. wrote basically a college paper on bromances, but before bromances were called bromances, she's basically like did a historical review on non-sexual relationships that men have had throughout history, um, and how in many of those cases the two men loved each other platonically um, more than they loved their respective wives, uh, and, uh. and so she's like, so she's like. <laughs> when okay, I was like, but, yeah, I've got, I've got a couple bromances or bro crushes. She's like, yeah, no, I know. I know that you love Eric more than you love me. <laughs> but women, historically, were just property. So. So that's the, that's the you know, excuse? Object, <laughs> objects could okay. love you back. <laughs> I, oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. Keep going, Eric. Keep, keep talking. Dig that hole. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's all this talk of chivalric love, and Eric's like, yeah, but then it's property. <laughs> That's just, it's just a woman. Uh, oh, my gosh. No, but, you know, if you if you go back, it, it, they're husband and wife. You know, 67% eat. of our followers on TikTok are female, right? You know that. <laughs> not anymore. Not after I'm, that. I'm not going to reply with what came into my head because mm-hmm. <clears throat> But if you if you think about those relationships, right, if uh, the man and the woman are not on equal footing, you know, that relationship is not as between equals. Right. So it's sure those dynamics are there. No, I I understand that. And I agree. But um, and, and, and part of that is also in a lot of these, you know, the farther back you go in cultures, a lot of these marriages were arranged and so neither mm-hmm. party necessarily had affection or love for one another it was not about that it was about continuing the family line or securing some sort of rights or, or properties or lands or whatever it was so in a lot of those there there's a ton of other factors besides just love where you know with a lot of these men you can say what you will about the you know going on you know, battle or going off to war, that's who you're spending time with. So obviously you're going to form a strong connection with those people. Um, but yeah. So anyway, 
Well, and I think there's well, nuance ahead, to there's nuance to the bromances out there. You know, there's the the giggly giddy kind. You know, yeah. when they're just have a lot in common. There's the hey, that is a really strong bond that's going to last forever. There's the mm-hmm. up in flames and gone too soon type. It, oh yeah. Yeah, so, I Jake, mean, I, I, are, are you and I the giddy kind or the uh, up in flames? I don't know kind? if we were. The, the only time we've ever been the giddy kind is when you get drunk. <laughs> then you just become a whole it's different true. person. It's true. Like, like you put your arm around our shoulders, you're like, hey man, yeah. I just want to know. I, I really appreciate you, and I really think you're just one of the best. And then otherwise, it's not that. I, it's a it's okay. You flip a switch. I mean, we all do to an extent when we're drunk, but like, like I remember this is not the same Eric Hoffman. A very specific moment shortly after you moved to Arizona. Um, and my wife and I and you were having drinks and I got just, <laughs> I could not stop expressing my love for both of you. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a beautiful moment. Oh, man. It was so earnest. That's the thing. Like, you just get so earnest when you drink. And then you'll have a wash of an apple and pass out in a Irish bar on St. Patrick's Day. And then we got to drag you up to you the also, hotel so you can watch Tangled. And the, the biggest thing with Eric is uh, <laughs> he gains about 15 IQ points. And he's already mm-hmm. a smart guy. But with a couple drinks in him, he becomes even smarter. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, no, trying to argue with him is impossible. Oh, uh, I've, I've never learned more than when I'm sitting yeah. and talking to a drunk he's, Eric. He's unlocking secrets of the universe while he's drunk. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm trying to find my keys. Like I've become a Protestant Ben Shapiro when I'm drunk, is what yeah, it is. You definitely have. I don't know if that's, <laughs> that's great. That's a good analogy. You, you don't talk as fast as Ben Shapiro. Yeah, I a ever, slow but, Protestant Ben Shapiro. Yeah, very, a very a slow measured, Protestant but tall Ben Shapiro. Uh, you're just <laughs> describing an entirely different person at this point. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So we got we got Maverick and Goose and Wayne and Garth. All right, so first. this is a play-in game. So this play-in game, I think Eric, you presented the the original brackets we had. Someone on our TikTok video commented, "What about Maverick and Goose?" And we're like, "Oh yeah, obviously we missed one of the greatest bromances of all time." Um, one that so turned bright we, we, but very short. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Gone too soon. So let's uh, let's play this one out. Wayne and Garth, probably my favorite bromance when I was a kid, um, versus an all timer in Maverick and Goose. So I'll draw three questions out. First one, question question number one. So let me look at see what that is. Okay, which like is more one. likely to take your breath away? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, one phone call. That's the name of this question. <laughs> you are driving home from a dinner with a group of friends when you see the cherries and berries of a police cl- cruiser light you up from behind. After elucidating with the perfect clarity that you are totally sober, even though you may have had a beer or two, you somehow find yourself in the local Hooskow for the duration of the night. Who do you call to bail you out? Maverick and Goose or Wayne and Garth? I mean, I think it's pretty apparent. I, I think Goose is going to be really reliable. I mean, he'll be oh, there yeah. to bail you out. Because he's married, right? Before he, yeah. In that movie, he's married. Right. He's got a kid. Yeah. So he's he's responsible. Maverick, Maverick's a Maverick, so you, you don't know about him. But Goose Either is way, really responsible. Two guys show up in uniform to pick you up mm-hmm. from the police station versus That's true. Wayne and Garth. Yeah. Yeah, Wayne and Garth might end up in jail with you. You might yeah. not get home if Wayne and Garth pick you up. Yeah. You know? And it might be a great night in jail if Wayne and Garth try to bail you out and then oh. they end up with you. But you're not getting home. And the the goal here is to get home. Yeah. No, and if, if and, and, uh, Top Gun is any indication, Maverick can just uh, talk to the Admiral's daughter and the Admiral can make a phone call. That's to the true. Station. They've got so, a lot of yeah. leverage. <clears throat> they show up with those wings on. You're you're going home that night. Okay, so For that's sure. pretty that's pretty clear. Right? That's a three zero sweep on that first question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, next we're question. We're playing to five, right? Yeah, first yes. to five, so commanding okay. lead. Ooh, for, that's uh, hard to come back from. For, for yeah, Maverick and Goose. Oh, gosh. This might be... Okay. All right. Fourth of July party. Nothing says America like a barbecue. Cheap beer and expensive fireworks. You have a choice of two backyard bonanzas to go to for this most patriotic of holidays. Which one will make the Founding Fathers proud and which one will make an evil <laughs> weep? All you got to do is roll out a, a volleyball game over. Stand volleyball. <laughs> yep. Yeah. There you go. I, I want, I mean, I want Wayne and Garth to have a great 4th of July party, but they might forget <laughs> to, you know, order food. I don't know. But yeah, it's definitely going to be in their mother's basement. Yeah. You don't want Wayne and Garth hosting. You want them showing up half drunk, you know, two hours exactly. late. You don't yeah, want and them then hosting. That would be a disaster. And then they start jamming on their guitar and just, mm-hmm. you know, playing Led Zeppelin. And that would be awesome. It's uncomfortable. the event. Right. They did plan Wayne Stock. I mean, in Wayne's World 2, they did plan Wayne mm. Stock, but it almost fell apart. So, I don't know. If, it I mean, was more successful, sex, uh, successful than the Fire Fest, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, as far as fests go, it's one of the better ones in the past 20 years. So, that's um, Maverick and Goose, right? 6 Yeah, they took it. I mean, 4th of July. Obviously, you're going to go to the to their party. I'm, I'm as you said, a, Cameron. I'm going to make a prediction right now. Okay. Maverick and Goose are going to survive this bracket. They're going to win this bracket. I don't know what the, I don't know how the chips will fall. You don't know the questions and all that. So that they're going to they're going to win this region right there. They're going to win this region. Put them in the final they're four gonna, right now. They're going to make it to the final four. That is a bold yep. prediction. I like it. Cuz okay. uh, there's some there's some uh heavy hitters in this Region oh, Cameron. there's some star power. I, you, I, got, I, you got Patton I realize and Eisenhower. That, how big of a statement that is. And it's early, yeah. I know, but Maverick and Goose, man, you're, that is... You, you're, just so you know, you're betting against uh, Patriots, Founding Fathers, and World War II winning generals, as well as two, two uh, giants of uh, the defense of the Christian faith. Be that as it may... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen two movies that Look, are that Cameron, good ever. Sometimes Cameron just goes by vibes, Eric, and you just got to roll with it. I'll, I'll tell you this much. Streak. Hey, what do they have Maverick. to do in the first round? How, how do you top that? You know, they, they went 5-0. Yeah. They swept them. They shut them out in dominating No, 6-0. Fashion. There's no mercy rule here. 6-0. They went 6-0. <laughs> yeah, they poured it on. I stand corrected. Yeah. I mean, right, that's right. a record. Just saying. All right. Biggest so, uh, of victory ever. I like it. Let's do our playing game. <laughs> Next up, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis versus uh, J.D. and Turk from Scrubs, which I'm going to oh, be honest, I have never watched that, an episode. Really? A really good show. It, yeah. it, I think I've it holds that. up. Yeah. It's, it's underrated. Uh, yeah, I, I think... Gosh, it was kind of on at the same time during The Office. So I think either you watch The Office or you watch Scrubs. But Scrubs, is a, it's a really good show, and there's some really good episodes there. Um, I discovered um, Scrubs years later. Like, I've, I've recently watched it in the last five years or so. Definitely a hidden mm-hmm. gem. Had no idea it was so good. Yeah. Got a lot of heart. I mean, it, it's silly. There's mm-hmm. a ton of silliness in there, but it's got a lot of heart. Uh, For sure. As far as those types of shows go. Um. All right, so I pulled the first question for these two, which is question number 14, Rescue Rothstein. Oh, no. Your buddy, Warren Rothstein, finds himself in an emotionally abusive relationship with an evil psychiatrist named Karen. As Karen isolates Warren from you and your friends, you all decide that you need to save Warren from Karen and reunite him with the one who got away, Mindy Perkins. Who will join you to rescue Rothstein? J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis or J.D. and Turk from Scrubs. Eric, why don't you lead us off here? Because I feel like I think you have an answer you want to give, but yeah, I I definitely want to answer answer Tolkien and Lewis. Uh I'm just not sure how they're going to handle that situation. 
Sure. They're not interested in making sure you end up with somebody. They're going to make sh- – they want to make sure you end up well, whole as a person. Can I, can, I, can I throw a caveat in here, though? Go for it. Tolkien was not a huge fan of C.S. Lewis marrying Joy for a couple reasons. One, because she was American – Obviously, <laughs> and two because she wasn't Catholic. So, well, neither and, and was that's part of the reason. No, and he didn't like that either. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but but I'm saying, if anybody would be a little upset about a woman coming in to break up a friendship, it would definitely be J.R.R. Tolkien because part of the reason towards the end of their lives, or at least towards the end of their friendship they broke up is because of Lewis's marriage to joy. There's other factors, but that was a, that was one of them. So I'm just throwing that out there. I, maybe it affects your decision or not, but I'll go with it. That That's enough. Tolkien and Lewis thread. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm probably going to go with JD and Turk. Because the antics involved would be more their speed, I think. Um, yeah, I, I feel like they would they would have the the they'd be down to do whatever it takes. But how about you, Cameron? Yeah, I'm I'm with you there, Jake. If if I'm about to make a bad decision, I don't want reason and logic and you know to be beaten over the head with a C.S. Lewis proof of. You know, here's the wise choice. I need somebody that's going to put their arm around me, reason with me, and say, hey, man, do the right thing. And that's J.D. Mm-hmm. Tur- Turk's job. Okay. I think so. Right now we're at 2-1 after this yeah. question. question. Next question, the golden ticket. This might even things out a little bit for you, Eric. You receive the golden ticket. You get to expand your friend circle and are given the choice to join one of two very exclusive bro groups, J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, or J.D. Yeah. and Turk. The invite will be a weekend of camping, hunting, and ghost stories. If things go well, you may become a permanent <laughs> member of the group. Which one do you choose? Uh, and I bet C.S. Lewis tells some great ghost stories. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's Lewis and Tolkien, easily. I don't know if they're good at camping, but... They served in World War One. I'm sure they can handle a yeah. night out in the, under the stars. Yeah, it's Tolkien and Lewis, hands down. Oh, same for same for me, Tolkien and Lewis. I, I like JD and Turk, but man, if I had a chance to join the Inklings, that that would be a dream come true. Yeah, I don't, I don't uh, picture JD and Turk camping. I just don't think it's their best setting. Tough draw, but it's. Uh, but Lewis you get a chance to be their friends if you go with them. You can, yeah. you can join their friend group. Is that what you want, or you want to go I, see us, Lewis and Tolkien? I think Lewis and Tolkien are more exclusive. Like I'm going to impress a lot of people if I can hang out with Lewis That's and Tolkien true. and be their buddies. Like if I get seen That's with true. them, like I automatically get, you know, street street cred for that. Yeah, that's a good point. That is a good point. You will look a lot more. That's something you can put on your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> Fair. Resume All right. builder. Um, okay. This is a story from our college years, Eric. Oh, boy. Let's hop into the Wayback Machine of the year 2002. You are a sophomore in college hanging out with your bros in your dorm room, and your buddy, and your buddy Greg comes in to play a little GTA on the <laughs> PS2. No sooner, though, does he sit down in the futon to veg out than a ring then comes in on the room. girlfriend phone. calls. That is girlfriend Jenny, <laughs> sweet as pie, calls in to ask if Greg happens to be in the room because he needs to study for his literature final. Greg hunches down, sinking into the futon as he frantically waves while silently mouthing the words to say, I'm not here. Which bros do you think are going to cover for your boy Greg? J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis or J.D. and Turk? <laughs> well, to- Tolkien, knowing he's she's a good Lutheran girl, is going gonna, is gonna to wave her off. Yeah, if she was Catholic. Yeah. Maybe. And, and but. Jenny was not. So <laughs> I'm really I'm really fighting for Tolkien and Lewis here, but uh gosh. I'll let you two vote the first two. I I think that see this is hard because JD and Turk giggle the whole time 
and they're going to give you mm-hmm. away immediately. Um, oh, Tolkien and, and Lewis, I I don't you know on moral grounds they're not going to be able to lie for you. So, I, but I think if they I'm gonna, had to, would they be better at it than JD and Turk? Well, well are, we, I think, are we going off of the premise that they have to lie, or is it just how would each pair do? They've got a situation? cover for you. So oh, Jenny's Lewis calling. and Tolkien could weave a web of words. Yeah, to, yeah. To make Jenny's head spin. Yeah, yeah. She'd be like, yeah, I don't I, know if Greg is in the state. There was a boy named Eustace Scrub, and he almost <laughs> deserved it. <laughs> Let me tell you about Eustace. I was asking about Greg, so I think yeah. they could do it, but yeah. They could just distract. Would they? That they would. That's a I, good question. So, yeah, I I don't know. I think I'm, distraction I'm is leaning, the best policy there. What is yours? I think distraction is the best policy. So I'm going Tolkien and Lewis are the people for the job. Okay, I think personally it would be JD and Turk. That's who I would pick. But hmm. uh, right. Eric's Eric's a solid vote for Tolkien and Lewis. <laughs> Yep. So I think that ta- I think that takes it. They take it six to three, right? Yeah. I don't feel bad about that. I like JD and Turk, but I'm happy with that result. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with Tolkien and Lewis moving on. Uh, that's mm-hmm. totally fine with me. They wrote two of the greatest fantasy series in the history of the world, so I'm happy with them moving on. All right. So now we're into the actual first round. We've got our play-ins done. Yep. <clears throat> We've got RBG and Scalia versus Maverick and Goose. <laughs> say this is a great will. matchup. Say what you will. <laughs> These two, RBG and Anton and Scalia, were bros. Um, they, they were something else. So let's uh, let's say I have some facts here. They frequently spent New Year's Eve together. Their families would spend New Year's Eve together. They've served on the Supreme Court since 1993, um, obviously before Scalia died in 2016. Um, They served on the D.C. Appeals Court before that in the 80s. Um, They shared an opera of a love of opera, food, wine, and then they were both from New York. Um, Scalia said about RBG, what's not to like except her views on the law, of course. Um, (laughs) That's awesome. It's just <laughs> that's such a Scalia quote. type statement too. Yeah, um, they would frequently, when when cases would be debated between them, you know, or brought to the Supreme Court, they would frequently write their like if if the majority was going to RBG's side, the, the liberal side of the court, Scalia would write his dissent. He would send it to her, and she would basically mark it up and say, "No, here's where your legal argument is wrong." And then when the when the Situation was reversed. She would do the same. She would write her dissent, send it to him. He would mark it up and say, "No, here's here's the holes in your argument." And so they would they would do that to make sure that even though they were arguing on different sides of things, they were trying to provide the best argument. Do you think that they could? Uh, Kajanji Brax, Jackson Brown and uh, Brett Kavanaugh have the same relationship. <laughs> <laughs> no, although I believe it is hard to imagine. No, they that would don't. be amazing. It, they should. But I mean, they I work think, so closer together. They should have these things. I think. Uh, I think Elena Kagan is. Uh, I think she might be friends with Kavanaugh or Gorsuch. Um, hmm. I think her and Gorsuch have had really, like they've landed on the same side of issues, even though they're liberal conservative. They've landed on the same side of issues uh, quite a bit on, on some of these. Not as high profile cases, but on some of these other cases. So, yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think Kavanaugh and, and Katanji, but I mean, I mean, who knows? Given enough, I mean, she's only been on the court for like six months, so who knows? I mean, over the next decade or two, what friendships form? All right. Anyway, all that to say, I know they're going up against Maverick and Goose, but I feel like they have a long standing, steady relationship that that can uh, that can hold its own all right next question is question 21 <laughs> of golf <laughs> so 
You and your bros are competing in an all-day nine-bar pub golf tournament. You'll be broken into two teams, you and your bros against your rival at work, Stefan, and his bros. There will be shots, there will be bar games, there will be feats of strength. Who do you choose to be on your team? And having participated in a few of these pub golf tournaments, it is it is always surprising who comes out on top. It's yeah. not easy. As a young Antoine learned once, don't try to outdrink the dads. <laughs> That's right. So, Shout out to Antoine Sorrell. Yep. So RBG and Antoine Scalia. So who's going first? Or... Or if anybody wants to just throw out an opinion. Okay, so my my initial reaction to this is, you know, anything involving alcohol, it's it's goose and maverick. You know, they know their way around a bar. You, they did, you know, all the push-up contests and all the, um, mm-hmm. you know, you lost that love and feeling. I feel like... There are a lot of there's a lot of ground that they can cover inside a bar. Um, sure. My concern is that they're a liability getting from bar to bar. You know, if you're bar hopping, you know, Maverick's liable to run out in front of traffic and you know break a break an arm or something heinous. Um, yeah. Goose is obviously accident prone. You know, that's the liability. Gosh. Yeah, he is. Oh, so, too soon, Cameron, Eric. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> too Forty soon. years. Thirty five years. I mean, years. yes, he's he's going to find himself in in a windshield of a car. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, may, maybe he'll uh, careen into a nearby lake. I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's I, rough. There, there's your kind of setup, but I think the ceiling is higher for Mav and Goose. I'm going with Mav and Goose in this scenario. You got to swing for the fences in pub golf. That you do. But I'm looking at this photo of Scalia and G- Bader Ginsburg, and they've got they a look in their eyes. just came off a night of that. that, that, that like, <laughs> yeah, they just they just dropped it. They just they just uh, you know just had uh, oral hearings and uh, did that totally hungover. But it looks like there's nothing they haven't seen in that photo. Yeah. They were on hole eight or bar eight. I've never done yeah. pub golf, but they're like, hey, we've got like uh, our our whole Supreme Court picture tomorrow. Are you ready for that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess we'll have to be. Yeah. See you in the chambers at 7 a.m. It's okay. <laughs> I'll be sitting, Ruth, so I'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like RBG and Scalia. Just I, I take, take my eyes here. open. It'll be fine. <laughs> I... I I don't know, man. RBG and Scalia are going to get par after par after par. They're steady, you know, so on yeah. the back nine, I think they're going to finish strong. But yeah. who's and Matt I, I think are going to go eagle, eagle, eagle to start off. Yeah, it's happened to me many times. I, yep. I, I, I fly way too close to the sun way too early. Yep. <laughs> and then I'm sucking down waters and lemon slices for the rest of the night. Yeah, you I need a lot a, of penalty strokes. <laughs> hey, I either need an invite to pub golf or I need an explanation. Yeah, we, we can do both. I can give you, yeah, you want to come to pub yeah. golf next December in Phoenix? Uh, uh, sounds great. But give me the I'll run drive down if you drive down. Okay, so, so basically, nine bars. This is the way that we do it. Um, nine bars, each bar has a score, you know, three, four, five, you know, par three, par four, par five. And then within each bar, there are certain drinks that you have to take to get under par, to get a birdie or an eagle. Um, So, like, let's say at the Irish bar, a par is a pint of Guinness. Um, If you want to go for a birdie instead of the pint of Guinness, you can have a shot of Jameson. And if you want to go for an eagle, you got to have a beer and a car bomb, something like that. Mm-hmm. So your score is based on what you drink, and you have to keep it down. And uh, if you drink just water, you can have water when you're drinking. We learned that you should not penalize people for drinking water. <laughs> but if you have just water, then it's a it's a bogey. So um, that's basically how it goes. And so then over the night, well, each bar, you're, you're getting different scores, and then whoever has the lowest score wins. But you're leaving something key out of that. Mix though, Jake. There are um, bonus points 
strokes oh, yes. off for feats of strength. Or, you yep. know, if you happen to have your little child's so, putter and you can so putt from across the room into a glass, that's minus yeah. one off your score. Yeah. So can, the degree of difficulty goes up tremendously as you go through the course. So it's good to get uh, yeah. points on the board early, um, but then you don't want to go out and play. What's the time span the road. of this event? Like, is There's this no, a three hour event, a four, four hour event? Uh, oh, four no, five, it lasts yeah, four or five well, hours at least. So the way we've done it the past few years down in, in, in AZ was it would be during a championship. Saturday, so we're, we're college football conference championships are going on, and um, it, it, the first it would start at around uh, one to two p.m. and mm-hmm. it would go throughout the whole night. Um, the last one we did didn't go as long; it, it was a bit sh- quicker, but still mm-hmm. nine bars. Mm-hmm. But some people dropped out considerably before we got to nine. And there's like year. a a break for dinner. One of one of the bars yeah, the on turn. the course is so at whole five. Yeah. We eat dinner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you can kind of linger at the turn. Yeah. So yeah, it just kind of depends. <laughs> you down? Want to do it? Be great. I, it does sound great. I just have to figure out how to make a quick weekend out of that. You'd be a great addition you'll, to the roster. Eric. You'll find a reason. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> that sounds like the reason. Yeah. All right. Anyway, all that said, I think uh, we haven't really answered the question, though. Right? I went with RBG. I, I, I already yeah. cast my boy, vote. I already cast my. You went with so RBG. Right Who'd now. you go with, Cameron? I went with Goose and Mav. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with RBG and Scalia. Uh, age over beauty. That's what I'm going with. Obviously. Age over beauty. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Question eight. Let's see what this one is. Let's <laughs> let's start a band. All right. Everyone knows that if you want to pick up chicks, you got to be cool. And if you want to be cool, you got to start an 80s hair band in your garage with your buddies from high school. You got the dream. You've got the pipes. You just need your bandmates. Who are the wild stallions that will join your motley crew? Mm. Great balls of fire. It's Goose and Maverick. Yep. You lost yeah. that loving feeling. Yeah. We know they can oh, sing. That too. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Oh. And, so and not it. only that, Goose Goose's he taught his son to be a great singer as well, because mm-hmm. Miles Teller ended up being great on the piano and great singer. Which so okay, can we can we stop? He, he's for a, a moment. great recruiter as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. you've seen Top Gun Maverick, uh, just a fantastic movie movie overall. I mean, it just completely enjoyable. But Miles Teller cast perfectly. As the son yeah. of uh, Anthony Edwards and Meg Ryan. Totally. Oh, yeah. Like, just makeup and hair, they landed. Yeah. They landed yeah. that mm-hmm. plane on a carrier. Hard to do. It's pretty amazing. Awesome. All right. So that doesn't take it. They don't – that doesn't take it because they're only up four to two at this point. Yep. Oh, really? So we got one more question. Four to yeah, two. Yeah, we're too we're soon. S- we're still yeah, alive That's here. okay. That's okay. That was the third question, right. wasn't it? And I think, well, here's the third question. And I actually think, and I did not choose this ahead of time, but I think it fits this perfectly. It's a bit more somber. Okay. Just disregard that. The eulogy. So the Reaper comes for us all, and you are no exception. Now, obviously, this will be many years from now, but there's no question the time will come. Your only question is will be who will you trust with carrying out your will and giving your eulogy? Because we know that is only a job for your bros and not your wife. So who would be better at giving a eulogy? And I think this is a good question for this particular matchup. Because obviously when, um, when RBG's husband died, this was before Scalia and she died, uh, Scalia wept. Um, on the bench, he was just weeping about it because he was so distraught. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, RBG and Scalia were such great friends for decades. And then Goose and Maverick, I mean, and so who, <laughs> who do you think would do a better job uh, honoring their friend? Let's put it that way. Ooh. A little more heavy. Yeah. So I'm I'm thinking back to Top Gun Maverick, the second one. Mm-hmm. 
when Iceman dies. Um, when when Goose dies in the first one, Maverick is not good with words in that mm-hmm. scenario. I mean, death just, I mean, it, it destroys him. He doesn't he runs handle away. it well. That's what he does. That's exactly. Maverick's MO. He runs away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's, he's great in a pinch, but if I have somebody eulogizing me, I'm not picking, I don't want Maverick anywhere near that situation. So, um, yeah, I, to me it's an easy choice. Yeah, Goose would, would get up there and he'd say something heartfelt. I think it would be a um, a nice thing, but you're missing 50% of the bromance there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's just not going to be the same. Whereas RBG and Scalia obviously would, you know, knock it out of the park. Okay. That's interesting. Um, what are you thinking, Eric? I, 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 I tend to agree with Cameron here. I mean, I think RBG and Scalia not only have the vocabulary okay, let's look, let's to... Look, let's look at it this way, and maybe this will change your answers. Or maybe not. What if it's not Scalia dies and RBG has to eulogize him, or vice versa, or Goose dies and Maverick has to eulogize him, but... Um, for the Supreme Court, it's, you know, Clarence Thomas or John mm. Roberts passes away or uh, vice versa in Maverick. Uh, let's say Iceman dies in the first movie and not Goose. And so Maverick and Goose have to honor Iceman or um, the Admiral of, of the ship or something like that. Mm-hmm. Does that mm-hmm. change your answer? I, I still now it's, think it's them together. Scalia and, and RBG have not only the vocabulary, but also the the mastery of the English language and the spoken word to eulogize in a way that's going to be impactful and, and, and just nail it, regardless of who the person is. Maverick and Goose, uh, <clears throat> what, they're like 24 years old. They're great in a plane, but... They're not particularly great with words. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's it's four to four now, nice. Jake. It's four to four, yeah. isn't it? It is. It's all not at all. My bold prediction is me. on the line right now, and I'm sweating it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was leaning towards Maverick and Goose. But man, you guys made really good arguments. Um, well, let's talk through it. What's what's your Maverick and Goose thought process? Um, because with with Maverick and Goose, you can see how well they work together. Like they are in sync constantly, and which is why Maverick is so distraught because basically half of him is now gone once Goose dies. Mm. Um, but they work so well together. They've got the banter back and forth. They, um, you know, they, they, the, the, they are one with their machine, um, when they're flying. Uh, so in that regards, I feel like in a task like this, if one of their fellow airmen died, they would, they would do it right. If, Mm. if that person died, um, they might not give like an eloquent eulogy in the way that, you know, Gator Bader Ginsburg or Scalia would, but I think it would, it would be right um, for that situation. So that's why I'm leaning towards Maverick and goose, but you guys made some good points. (laughs) Dang it. Uh, you know, I'm going to stick with my gut, Maverick and Goose, even though that's that's who I was thinking when this yes. question came up. So that's who I'm sticking with. I don't want to. Yes. I'm not going to switch yeah, my don't vote. Don't overthink it, quite Jay. Yet. Good job. Good job. <laughs> don't Happy to bail it. you out, Cameron. Yes. <laughs> See, my, my integrity was very much on the line there. And you did, a la you... Bader Ginsburg and, and Scalia, I, I yeah. stuck to my, my guns. <laughs> 
Oh, got a sports on sports one. I like this. All right. So arguably the greatest quarterback tight end duo of all time. I don't even know if it's arguable at this point. Yeah. Um, And arguably the greatest boxing movie. Why um, why do we not have a picture of, of, you know, any of us like this Rocky and Apollo picture? So actually there's a – it's funny you say that because I have a photo – of I think this was on the eve of our twenty first birthday party, and we were going to go to Ed DeBevix. Oh yeah, and I'm we're in the dorm room, and for whatever I got like my dumb like North Carolina cap on, it's backwards, and I've been wearing like this stupid checkered blue polo shirt, <laughs> and I have a football, I can, and I'm like, going I wasn't like this. there, but I could picture that. Oh <laughs> and my god, like this throwing it, and then there, you <laughs> are coming in to like form tackle me. And it, Amy snapped the photo, and this was before the era of the smart camera, and it was perfect. And I'll see if I can find it. But I, I know the picture that, you're talking about. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. But oh my god! So we, we, we do, do have, we do have a photo, kind of like the, we do have a picture as well from Ultimate Frisbee, where we're all wearing cut off shirts. Oh yeah, and we look good. <laughs> like, watch out, ladies. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it. I might not be able to find it. So while I look for this, let me give you the next question. <clears throat> uh, 16. Oh, gosh. Uh, all right. Weekend at Lenny's. So this is another one we did in the previous bracket. Eric, you know how this goes. You are invited to your CEO Lenny's Beach House for a weekend of sun, surf, and fun as a thank you for after you tell him about some fraudulent transactions at his company. But lo and behold, when you arrive for your well-earned respite, Your CEO, Lenny, is dead. But before you can call the police, the rest of the party guests arrive, and you just need to roll with it. Who will help you keep this ruse going? Grock and Brady? Or Apollo Creed and Rocky Balboa? All right, you guys discuss while I see if I can find this photo and send it to you. There's almost no... Brady and Gronkowski have no issue with fibbing a little bit if it means winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, feel like yeah, exactly. Avoid the heat. Rocky is more play it by the book, do it the right way. I think. But Apollo Creed in the ring. Okay, sorry, you guys keep talking. But yeah, man, um, I'm with you there, Eric. The first thing that comes to mind is Deflate Gate. You know, they they covered that up. They rolled with it pretty well. It didn't. The truth didn't come out for you know years afterward, right? Um, so if I need somebody to cover something up, Brady and Gronk is a, is a pretty good go-to. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think if Rocky and Apollo Creed would have that same kind of chemistry when it comes to that. Okay. Well, let's Um, look at it this way. Look at the photo, Rocky and Apollo. This is Rocky three after Apollo trains him to be mm -hmm. able to beat Clubber Lang. Um, yeah. So at this point, their friendship is about as rock solid as it's going to get. Um, so obviously not the first movie or the second movie when they're still rivals. What do you think? Does that change your answer at all? Or are you, are you still sticking with Brady and Gronk? Well, I mean, I, I haven't decided yet. I'm just kind of. You're just talking it out. That's fine. Yeah, Eric, just talking I it out. To you. trying to figure it out. Uh, um, your Gmail. You know, if I look at those two photos. Gronk and Brady are, you know, they're whispering strategy right there. Um, yeah. Apollo and Rocky aren't strategy guys. They're all heart, you know, especially Rocky. Um, does Apollo Creed teach him how to be greasy, fast, lightning, chasing after the chicken? Yes. Yeah. But, you emailed yeah, them to I, me, Jake? I, I shared them with the, to Da Hofferman at Gmail. Oh, great. Now everyone has my email address. Oh my gosh! Uh, Sorry, you have to dump that. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, Brady and Gronkowski, it is for me. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I mean, I'm trying to think of a reason that somehow yeah. <laughs> Apollo. Find him. Yeah, I got him. All right, okay. hold on. Yeah, I'm going to share these to you guys, and then I'll throw them up into what... uh... Yeah, please do. There's another one. You're going to email it? 
<laughs> you you guys the... can see it. I've seen that one somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Drink it in. Uh, Romance. <laughs> Um, here, here, let me just, I'm going to briefly throw this in over here so that, uh, <clears throat> oh, no, that's, they're not going to see it. Um, I could probably find some good ones over the years of of the three of us, four of us, with uh, soccer yeah. and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's a great photo. Um, anyway. I, I agree. I think Brady, Brady and Gronk are probably the natural fit for that question. So that would be my vote. Uh, Cameron, you probably going Brady and Gronk or yeah. Paolo and Rocky? Yeah. So we're, we're right, two, Eric, your vote? two of Brady and Gronk. Two of nothing. I agree. All right. Let's see. Okay. Okay. This is another question we had from last night. Um, Wreck the cul-de-sac. So, aliens have finally decided to invade Earth, and they chose the destination of their invasion on the mean streets of Bakersfield, California. It's up to you and your bros to beat back the aliens, save Earth, and still be home in time for dinner. Who's got your back? Apollo Creed and Rocky Balboa or Brady and Gronk? So, if I'm aliens and Apollo are... And, and Rocky right now. If, if aliens are coming to destroy you know, Bakersfield, California, we got to defend it with all we've got, you know, Bakersfield. Well, I thought you were going to say like, we just need to let that happen. Bakersfield <laughs> is a hidden course. gem of the central <laughs> Valley. It truly <laughs> is. It truly is. And, you know, I need, I need two guys that are all heart. When, when Clubber Lane punches, he punches so hard. It whistles. You guys remember that from mm-hmm. Rocky three? Yeah. You know, those, uh, predictions, those, pain, <laughs> pain the alien missiles are going to be whistling in as well at breakneck speed um mm-hmm. rocky and and apollo they're going to be comfortable they're going to be like i've seen this before let's take yeah. on some aliens and and they're going to wreck them no problem i agree i i think so and you know tom brady's got weak knees yeah he's got great pocket presence mm. but he's got weak knees that's not going to Pocket Those are going to fail him. Those are going to fail him in the end. We Shout out know. to Dan Brousseau. <laughs> yep. Eric, your thoughts? Who's who's protecting your town? I, I I feel confident in the hands of Rocky and Apollo. All right, that knots it up. So we go to a third yeah. question. Wow. Underdog story. Look at them. Just like that. Shocker. On the brink of the shock in the world here. Who's the okay. who's the four and who's the five here? I, I got to know. That's that's important for my next uh, way. In. Brady and Gronk are the four, the four seed. Ooh, okay. That's a that's a huge okay. factor to me. All right. Question nine: Cross country road trip. You've just moved back to your home state to take a job <laughs> as an assistant director at the YMCA summer camp. When out of the blue, your best friend from college calls you up with a dream job teaching in none other than beautiful Tempe, Arizona. All that separates you from finally starting your illustrious five-year career as a teacher <laughs> is a cross-country road trip from your in your 2002 Ford Escort ZX2 with all your belongings shoved in the trunk. It's just you, your buddy, the open road, and two bros. Who would be the better road trip companions? Brady and Gronk. Brady and Gronk or Apollo Creed and Rocky Balboa? I was I was doing a little research, uh, getting ready for this, and I just YouTubed um, Brady and Gronk, and they did the uh, instead of the newlywed game, the friends game, and they yeah. are so giggly. I mean, it's is the word cute appropriate with their yes, with their love so. affair? I mean, oh, yeah. it is straight up. I think cute. So. They're giggling the whole time. They're just so pleased with themselves. Um, yeah, I, I think that that would be hilarious to go on a road trip with those two. Yeah, I the only downside to that road trip, I mean one, it's gonna be a very cramped car, no matter who mm. it's in. But two big dudes. The only the only downside I see coming is Tom Brady's gonna keep talking to me about how great avocado ice cream is. Mm. And if I just got with the T B twelve system, you know, it'd change everything in my life. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gronk's gonna be like, "Dude, we're out of beef jerky." Like it, it's it's just too different. 
But yeah, I think it would be better. Like I think Rocky is more of a downer than Brady is. Like, I don't think Rocky would be as fun. Apollo Creed mm-hmm. would be awesome, but mm-hmm. I think Rocky would bring the mood down. Whereas Gronk would be incredible and Brady would bring it down a bit, but not as much as Rocky would. So I think that, that changes it. That, that would be my choice. What do you think, Eric? I'm I mean, I think that, Gronk that all the way. It, but yeah. All right. Six to three. So I chose this picture here of Rocky and Apollo. <clears throat> yeah. I, I just, I don't know what, what brings them to this point in the film. This is after Rocky finally beats the training montage. Apollo in the race. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, after, at the end of the training montage on the beach, they're, they're sprinting down the beach. Rocky finally outruns him. And, uh, which is a little suspension of disbelief, but, and, uh, and then they celebrate because now he's finally ready to avenge Mickey's death and go beat Clubber Lang. Okay. That's all. Just curious. Yeah. All right. Nope. We're not doing that yet. <clears throat> all, right, all right. Next one. Next matchup. Patton and Ike <laughs> against who is that? Tolkien and Lewis. Yep. <laughs> Great. <laughs> the juggernauts. Okay. All right. Okay. I don't know if this fits either of these pairings, but here we are. Omega Moo Gamma. OMG. Oh, no. Dean Randy Cheddar Dalton is on your case about saying that the new house you just moved into after breaking up with your girlfriend is for campus housing only. Your friends Derby Craft and Craig the Keg convince you to turn your house into the frat Omega Moo Gamma as a loophole. But Dean Cheddar is not going to give up, so make sure your fraternity pledges are ready to get down and dirty in the KY Jelly to save your house. Who... Who you want to join your, this old school? your fraternity? <laughs> yeah, this is old school. You're my boy, Blue! <laughs> so, say it again, Jake. The, the who do I want as a pledge? Who do you want fraternity? in your fraternity to help you keep your keep your house on the campus uh, so you don't have to move? Uh, Eisenhower and Patton were both West Pointers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They know a thing or two about these kind of shenanigans. So shenanigans. I'm going with Eisenhower and Patton. Yeah, I mean, and Patton outwitted the Desert Fox all throughout North Africa. So Eisenhower and Patton, I think so too. I don't know. In in the warm fuzzy. Um, lawsuit averse college campuses of recent years I feel like Patton is a liability he's going to break something to Eisenhower. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to light something on fire that's okay in war a um, couple people die in war to be expected a couple people die things get crazy on a college campus in 2023 um, there's, there's, yeah, you lose your charter. Yeah. You can't have collateral damage this day and age on a college campus. Um, you need somebody steady. You need somebody that's gonna, you know, fly under the radar. I'm going Tolkien and Lewis. I feel like the way you're presenting it, and I don't disagree with how you're doing it. You're presenting Tolkien and Lewis. Like they're your cover story. Like you can brush that. You can put them in front of the Dean. Look how professional we are. Look how civilized we are. Exactly. Meanwhile, you're doing keg stands in the back. Yeah. And somebody's got a pet tiger in the, in the bathroom. <laughs> Never been in the hangover. Too. Yeah. These are two uh, <laughs> linguistics majors. They're not, they're not partying yeah. hard. You can trust us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a bad thought. I, I'm sticking with Patton and Ike, but I like where your head's at. So we had two, one then. Or two, one. Patton so. and Ike. Next question. All right. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> can I veto this question? Yeah, Only you're, if we you're hear the first. guy. 
Okay, if you guys let me know if I should veto this question. Okay. Although, maybe not. Uh, you are a new detective who has been tasked with going undercover to join a street racing gang that also happens to rob semi-trucks of their high-end electronics. <laughs> As you get deep in with the gang, you befriend their leader, John Rossetti, though you're still trying to arrest him. But when you finally go to arrest Rossetti... Uh, you find out a member of the gang needs your protection. And in that moment, you learn there is something more important than justice. And that's family. Family. <sighs> <laughs> who, will, who, who in this crew will you bring with you to protect your own? So, John, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, or, and C.S. Lewis, or General George S. Patton and Dwight D. Eisenhower. I, I don't have a problem with that question. You know, um, what do you think, Eric? So there's a question in that Fast and Furious uh, scenario, and that is um, whether you whether you put justice over kind of the greatest ethic possible, right? And so mm -hmm. where Patton and Eisenhower would be, we're going to serve justice at whatever cost. We are going to execute the objective at whatever cost. That's their job. But both Tolkien and mm -hmm. Lewis engaged with ethical questions that go beyond common justice, even the greatest common justice. And so if you're in this scenario... I believe Tolkien and Lewis are going to come to the conclusion that the greatest. So ethic you think you think Patton and Ike are still going to arrest John Rossetti and not save the member of the crew because that's what justice calls for. Yes. And and you're saying Lewis and Tolkien would say would I moved. understand justice is important, but we need to save this guy's friend. Yeah, because there's a greater ethic there. And that's okay. I just think they would. That's a, now, whether they get around to it or not, besides debating it, I don't know. Yeah, but, I mean, they might just argue about the best plan of action for 10 hours in a pub, but they would try. Yeah. And again, they both did serve in the trenches of World War One, So it's not like they didn't know how to scrap if they had to. Yeah. Um, I, I think everybody looks at them as just the did professors. Did Lewis but serve? I'm pretty sure I know he Tolkien also served. Did. Yeah. Didn't they meet as soldiers in World War One? No, they met much later on. They met in Oxford. Um, uh -huh. They were both at Oxford, but they both served. I'm pretty sure Lewis also served in World War One. Can't imagine an Englishman who didn't. <laughs> that. Somebody fact check us if we're wrong on that. Eric's already on it. According to Gary, this, you have any thoughts what Eric looks that up? World War One. Um... You know, I, I I had to make some big decisions. Um, Tolkien and Lewis are, you know, it's theoretical, you know, very intelligent oh guys. They're going to think through it. But on the battlefield, um, those are decisions that are tested. And I don't know where Ike and Pat would, would fall on that. Um but you can't do better than those two making the choices. So, yeah, that, that's my that's my pick. I can. Pass. So Lewis uh, arrived at the Somme Valley on his 19th birthday. Uh, and he was wounded. Gosh, four months, four months later. Um, during the German Spring Offensive, two of his colleagues were killed. He was wounded. My gosh. Yeah. Okay. So Ooh. they both served. Yeah. All right. Um, I think I agree with you. I'm going to go with Patton and Ike on this one. And uh, that puts it at four. Eric, are you sticking with Lewis and Tolkien? Yeah. So it's four to two. So that puts us on a third. Question. All right. Third question is beer run. The 
party is hopping, the tunes are pumping, the dance moves are fire, and there's love in the air. The only problem, Kyle, the guy responsible for bringing the cake, totally blew it and just brought a couple bottles of Sailor Jerry rum and a six-pack of Zima. It's only 11 and the booze is almost out. If you want to keep the party rocking until the cows come home, you need someone to make a beer run for you. Who's going to save the day? Patton is going to punch through the German lines, save the horses, <laughs> save the 101st Airborne, and get you your beer. By any means necessary. By any yeah. means necessary. Yeah, even if it occurs the wrath of the USSR. Yeah, especially <laughs> if it occurs their wrath. <laughs> All right. right. I'm with I Eric. think that takes it. That That's five right there, Patton. Yep. Under the steady hand of Eisenhower, we'll get that beer. All right, that moves him on. I'm sad to see Lewis and Tolkien go, but I'm also happy to see Patton and Ike move on. Yeah, it's a good pairing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, what's our last match of the night? Uh, David and Jonathan... And Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. Biblical bros. American bros. Okay. It's another good matchup. Biblical bros and American bros. <laughs> okay. It's ready for the first question. I like this matchup. This is, um, you know, different era, old school. A um, yeah. little bit deeper in the memory banks for, for some of us, this will be, this will be a battle. Okay. All right. So the FedEx plane that you stowed away on crashes into the ocean during a storm because climate change, I guess. I don't know. After you swim to the shore with a, on a desert Island, you find a couple the plane caught COVID. Um, you find a couple other stowaways who survived the crash, who made it ashore, and will help you survive the next five years before you are rescued. You're only armed with your wits, innumerable FedEx parcels, and a volleyball you became way too attached to. <laughs> who would you rather have on the deserted island with you? Thomas Jefferson and John Adams or David and Jonathan? What are our prospects of getting rescued? I mean, five is years. This you, have just to, you have to survive five years. Five years. Ooh. Okay. So, I mean, gosh, John Adams. I'll go can first farm. if you want. Yeah, he can farm. Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson is a can genius. Yeah, and yeah, he's good at owning people, but that's not helpful <laughs> or ethical. <laughs> Or moral. <laughs> no, none of those things. <laughs> so, I mean, like I said, John Adams can farm. He can till the land. He knows what he's doing. Thomas Jefferson, unless he has people to tell what to do, uh, he's not doing any of those things. David and I, Jonathan, however, are I don't know about that. resourceful. Right? Like, they've yeah, I mean, been David in the wilderness. A, David was a shepherd. He was a shepherd. He had to survive in the wilderness while he's being chased by Jonathan's dad. Island? I'm sure there's some sort of livestock that he can throw into a fence. Um, <laughs> there's any lions he can, uh, he yeah, can kill him. I, I do think Thomas Jefferson is a problem solver. So he can identify ways to manipulate the terrain or I, I, mean, I think part he of might his be skill set was he was he was able to understand the the climate like he wrote a lot about the climate of, mm -hmm. of the plantations in Virginia and, and how to best get the best yields out of the, out of the ground and stuff like that. Um, he was very, very smart. I mean, he, he was well-versed in a lot of schools of thought. Uh, he was also capable of understanding kind of the early fruits of industrialization, even though that was not quite a thing yet, um, at least in America, but he understood kind of what was coming. So, He'd be very resourceful. So you have all these FedEx packages. I think you'd find ways to use them well. Um, so I'm not saying he has no applicable skills. I don't think this but, comes down to... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. 
I don't think this comes down to skills necessarily. I think this comes down to chemistry between the the two pairs. So okay. Jefferson and Adams, yeah, you know, they'll have moments where they're figuring something out and building up some beautiful, elaborate shelter, um, but they're going to fight over, you know, True. The, the stupidest things. And they're yeah, going to come to blows. Through that, halfway through that five years, they're just going to stop talking for six months. Exactly. Have you they're seen come the, to blows. the John Adams series on HBO? Mm-hmm. Where John Adams is played by Paul Giamatti? No. He does a great job. And I can just imagine him giving these long looks at Thomas Jefferson and just be like, I'm totally done with you for the mm-hmm. next two weeks. Mm-hmm. Enjoy your side of the island, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and then you're just stuck in the middle. Like, uh, guys, I caught guys? some fish. You know, like I like where your yeah. head's at, Cameron, and I think that's changing my vote because I was leaning Jefferson Adams, but David and Jonathan, from everything we've read, absolutely adored each other. Now, some people think that was romantic. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. But. They clearly were devoted to one another, and they didn't – even when their father, when Jonathan's father is hunting David, mm-hmm. Jonathan is like, I will do everything I can to keep you safe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you want that attitude on a desert island. For sure. And they grew up in an era that had way less technology than Jefferson and Adams, and you know, David was a shepherd and had to live with very little. So, Well, I'm going with David and Jonathan. I think you made a very, made a very good point. <clears throat> I think that's a three zero start then, right? Yeah, yeah. David and Jonathan. Okay, hot start. Let's see how it goes. Hot start. Let's see what happens next. Question mm-hmm. four. All right. Hmm. Okay. Bachelor party. You just got engaged. Before you walk down the aisle, you and your boys are going to have one last bash to celebrate with your pending nuptials. We're talking booze, strippers, and sparklers, baby. Who do you choose to plan your bachelor party? David and Jonathan? Or Thomas Jefferson and John Adams? Now, Thomas Jefferson frequently held big events and parties at Monticello Mm. um, and wowed guests there. David, apparently when he partied, he liked to strip naked and go dancing in the middle of the street when he got home. So he also had multiple weddings. So he had many weddings. So yeah, you know how to plan Mm -hmm. weddings really well because he had Mm -hmm. several. Um, Jonathan was married. I don't, doesn't talk about much about how the bachelor party was. So I can't tell you there. And uh, Jonathan Adams only married that one time, but they were devoted to each other. So I think we, your two Johns are kind of like your sensible ones in this group mm-hmm. here. And yeah. you got your mm-hmm. Jefferson and David that are going to be the partiers. Yeah. I, well, that makes I it a little bit tricky think... because they probably approach the party thing differently in both pairs, right? You've, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I feel like more concessions. And again, I got to go back to the relationship and, you know, how well David and Jonathan get along. Yeah, they're going to be different. They're going to have some dif- disagreements, but one is going to concede to the other and vice versa so that they can have a compromise. And, hey, let's just have a nice party. You know, we're not going to get too crazy. Um, let's just have a good time and, and bro out. And at the end of the day, that is what, a bachelor party is about. Um, it's about the dudes and just, just hanging out. I can see John Adams saying, I want to keep it chill and relaxed. And Thomas Jefferson being like, well, no, we're doing it my way. I can see them disagreeing about that bachelor party. Okay. Right. Like, so if it's my bachelor party and I say, Hey, John and Tom, uh, throw me a bachelor party. I want to keep it low key. I want to go to a few bars, have some drinks, talk history. John Adams like, sounds good. I'm probably going to bed early myself. And Thomas Jefferson saying, hold on. 
I think I want to add some things that you did. You either explicitly or implicitly told me to leave out. I'm bringing those in anyways. Mm. Okay. And they're going to disagree on that. And it's going to be a problem. Okay. Let's hold on. Let's would David not do that though. David, he might, but I think Jonathan could talk him out of it. Jonathan could be like, just chill. That's, That's not fair. what Cameron wants. Cameron wants it to be low key. And they would be like, all right, okay, you're probably who, right. There's uh-huh. a couple questions here. And uh, I'm going to start lobbying, I think, for Jonathan Adams and Thomas Jefferson. So got my bias out of the way. Uh, they created a country. <laughs> they created a country. They wrote down a document that a bunch of people that couldn't agree on anything all signed and said, yeah, this works. Let's do this. So they did that. Which I think works. Hmm. And and before they had their falling out with the election of 1800, they were very, very, very close. Um, and when Jefferson's wife died, Adams uh, and his wife Abigail consoled him. Um, and uh, like they were they, they did have that huge falling out. But then they also made up um, and had a correspondence of like 100 letters between each other um, before they died. And um so with that in mind, and then also, I think if it's my bachelor party, um, I think I would want to talk to those two quite a bit. Mm. And that's where I'm going to go with that. So I'll be the dissenting voice on this one, but I'm going with Adams and Jefferson. I'm changing my answer. You, uh, you swayed me there. I'm going Jefferson and Adams as well. Okay. You stand pat with David and Jonathan, Eric? No. <laughs> okay. No. But I'm not. And I don't I'll, like it. I want to go back to my bachelor party. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you were you were responsible in in much part for that. You and Nick, Jake. Um, it was pretty low key, but if I had to have key, either of these long. pairs there, <laughs> it was several weeks. It was several days. Um, yeah. Jonathan and David would be very interesting to have there, but they have no idea of the context mm-hmm. of history, and so yeah, I could have those conversations with John and Thomas. Like they would. I would be able to ask them questions about history and they would be like, oh, oh, yeah, we, we also have a good uh, concept of all these different things as well. Mm-hmm. David's Unless I got a to man World War after, David's like, what a is man that? after God's own heart. You know, yeah. that's that's a, he'd be a pretty good guy to talk to, Eric. I, Who? I would love to talk David. to David. David oh, is a sure, man after but, God's own heart. But in the context of my bachelor party. Where we literally were having drinks and talking about World War II, which would just blow Adams and Jefferson's guys, mind. Guys, guys, you won't believe what Germany did after you Twice. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> well, they, they probably ask, what's in Germany? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's not a country that exists yet, but it's going to, and it's going to invade France three times. <laughs> what's in Germany? <laughs> oh, you mean... <laughs> You mean the Hessians? Yeah, yeah, the Hessians. Yeah, they, they unite walkers. and just keep invading France until we get them to stop. <laughs> okay. All right, so if that's the case, that knots this up at three all. Oof. That was only the second that, question? Oh, my gosh. That was only right. the second question. That was a long one. Um, okay, I, I think this one's a good one for both. I think I, I can see reasons why... Either one would be a good choice here. Uh, the question is, he's fine, but we're at the hospital. So you and your boys are at a stud party celebrating uh, that you yes. and your wife are expecting their first child, but getting absolutely hammered while camping out in the woods. During an ill-advised axe throwing competition, you find the head of a hatchet buried into your shin. This Who didn't happen. <laughs> No, I, I'm liberties. saying I'm taking some, okay. taking some liberties. <laughs> Although Nick did run my car into a boulder, and that was fun. That did, did. he? Anyway, yeah. Oh, the thanks. front end of it was he 
Anyway, we're fine, Nick. I'm not still bitter about it. Um, this thing that you didn't even know. Um, who is calling your pregnant wife to tell her that everything is fine, but we have to go to the hospital while the other one drives? This is assuming that all of these characters can drive. You don't have to be in a horse or buggy or on a chariot. If, I mean, you can if you want, but. Well, first of all, I don't want David talking to my wife ever. Yeah, because mm, that'll be the fair. end of you. Well, how do you think you got? How do you think that axe got into your shin in the first place? Damn it. You know what you did. Yeah, good call. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm trying to come up with a reason. For David and Jonathan to, to be the guys to advocate for me there. Um, I want a wordsmith like Jefferson to be able to spin a tale. Look, it was totally innocent. He wasn't doing anything wrong. The axe came and, and it, it came up and bit him in the shin. No big deal. We're just going to out of nowhere. check in with the hospital. <laughs> Everything's fine. Um, a little I, bit I back think Jefferson... Jefferson could spin a web pretty well. I mean, I'm not casting my vote yet, but that's my initial reaction. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. What do you Any think, thoughts, Jake? Eric? I don't know. Uh, I, I totally, for whatever reason, I like you. I totally trust Jonathan. Absolutely, one hundred percent. I trust Jonathan to get me to the hospital. Come hell or high water. But I'm a little sketchy on David. I'm a little suspicious in my drunken stupor as I'm bleeding in my backseat no, he, of my car. I mean, we know he's a good shot with hard stone yeah, he doesn't miss. slash metallic he doesn't miss. objects. <sighs> uh-huh. So, uh-huh. so what's the objective? Is the objective to smooth things over with the wife or is the objective getting you to the hospital? The objective Safely. is to do both. It's it's a two parter. So one of them is driving okay. you to All the right. hospital. The other one's got to talk to the wife and be like, "Hey, we're going to the hospital, but it's fine." Okay. So, it's a, the, the, both pairs have both bros have to take on different roles. Yeah. David seems to be like the most unpredictable one of the four people. The one For that sure. would be least likely to carry out either of these tasks. Without the help of God. Yeah. Right. Jonathan might be the most trustworthy. He was a rascal back in the day. Of yeah. the four. Thomas and John will get the job done, though. Mm-hmm. I, I, I assume John Adams will be driving and Thomas Jefferson will be doing the talking. You see, here's the thing. I don't want Thomas Jefferson talking to my wife. Right, something about him. He can drive. I trust him to drive me. But I think John hmm. Adams... With his devotion to Abigail, I think he would be, you know. He might be really good to talk to his, your wife. Yeah. To calm her down. <laughs> Look, yes, it's an axe in the shin, but we've all been there. You, you'll understand. It's fine. Like, <laughs> I, I think he'd have a way of talking my wife down better than Thomas Jefferson. I think Thomas Jefferson would be totally capable of getting me there safely. But I, I feel like John Adams would be a steadying presence. Yeah, I, I think I'm sold on John Adams and Thomas Jefferson here. Here's here's a question. I just I just want to bring this up, get you guys thoughts. Yep. But there's a certain amount of uh, negotiation for for care. You know, when you go into the ER, typically it's you know packed a lot of times, and you know you get a leg injury. It's not life threatening. There's people in there. Maybe it's a gunshot wound. How? I, I think we need to discuss who's going to get you to the front of the line too. There's two so lawyers. They, in John mm. Adams and Thomas Jefferson. Mm. Uh, but you got Dave, you got Jonathan. And he's like, do you know who my dad is? King Saul. Like, <laughs> hey, that's not nothing. <laughs> and David is freaking out in the middle of the ER. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like, <laughs> what was me? Sling ready to go. <laughs> writing a song. Make me do it. Make yeah. me do it. <laughs> David's pulling out his harp. <laughs> <laughs> lamenting the fact that there's an axe in your shin. <laughs> Which is important, know. you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, you're all right. I, I agree. I think John, John Adams or Jefferson will probably, 
they will probably write a very compelling argument or speak a compelling argument to get us seen by the doctor uh, earlier rather than later. Yeah. It sounds like the more we talk about it, we're all casting our vote for Jefferson and Adams. David. Yeah. I don't trust that guy. There's something wrong yeah. with David. He's I a wild love card. Him. I love the guy, but he made some bad choices. He did. And this is, and as Eric said, this is equating him with a guy that just owned people. And that was Thomas <laughs> Jefferson's thing. And yet somehow. He was just owning people. <laughs> and somehow I am still more comfortable, probably because of John Adams. John Adams balancing Thomas Jefferson out is probably yeah. what's putting this over the edge here. Because I don't trust Jefferson in a lot of respects, but. The only thing, th- th- David yes, is I- redeemable only through the forgiveness of God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing that redeems him. Like what's on your, what's on your CV, David? Well, I killed a giant. Okay. What else? Well, <laughs> I, I had I, one of my most loyal captains murdered so I could sleep with his wife. I mean, that's not great. <laughs> like, I don't know. Just, I did not see where this was going. Yeah. You know, the more we talk through this, Jefferson and Adams, they're a force to be reckoned with in this bracket. It's going to be interesting how they go, but they, they've got a lot going for them. Yeah. I I agree. I think they, they've got a wide range of skill. I, I mean, mm-hmm. I think that settles that this is Jefferson and Adams, six to three. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think they'll be tough to beat because um, they're – Super intelligent, smart. They were very, very close for a while there. Um, they kind of balance each other out. There's a mm-hmm. lot going for them. All right, yeah. yeah. Jefferson and Adams, I mean, hit the button, Eric. So post-game analysis-wise here, I, I can't help but break down the, the remaining four in this bracket. We've got Goose and Maverick going up against a, a strong Gronk and Brady team. I don't know that that's going to be very interesting. Heck of a matchup, mm-hmm. um, two contrasting styles, and I can patent. You know, they've seen some things. Um, mm-hmm. World War champions. Let's just let's just put it out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. World War. Yeah, World, World War champions. Undefeated World War champions. I mean, it's great to be. A heavyweight champion. It's great to be a Super Bowl I, champion, hold, but hold a on. World War champion. That's something. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, starting a nation champion, Patriots, I don't know. right? You've got Maverick and Goose who single-handedly, well, not This Goose, is a very pro-American bracket right now. It is, yeah. This is a very Amero-centric. And, and I'm the looking at these Patriots, picks, and I'm like, wow. like, like I said, I would have liked it had Lewis and, and Tolkien gone farther. But... Not this not, is the all I, America region right now. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. at this and I don't see I don't see any like everyone that's in the final four of this bracket, they make sense. None of these are super surprising to me. Yeah. True. Like I would have been very surprised, I guess, in retrospect, had somehow JD and Turk made it into the final four of this bracket. I'd be like, I yeah. don't know if you guys belong here. Yeah, you would have to be these. a huge, huge fan of the show to have them. You know, mm-hmm. through the bracket. I mean, they're yeah. they're great, but they, you know, they had a nice run. They made the playoffs, but yeah, yeah, they they were pretenders. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, it's it's gonna be interesting. I I'm done making for predictions for the night. I, I stuck my neck out once. We'll see if it if it comes. Yeah, it got to real fruition. sketchy there for a second. It did. It did. I was biting my nails. But uh, yeah. yeah, can't wait to see how it plays out. All right. Yeah, this was a good region. Yeah, this was a great region. Yeah, Uh, that wraps up this uh, this bracket um, in our Super Brawl. So we've done the Brotiquity bracket. We just finished the Bro Roke. Is I guess next up is Bro Lightenment, right? Yes, it is. Do that bracket. All right. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, Hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And uh, make sure you guys like, subscribe, follow uh, wherever you see us or hear us. And uh, See you all next week and have a great day in history.